Be presenting a coccidiotis imidis uh, presenting with acute hydronemothorax in an immunocompetent patient from South Texas. And I have uh, uh, other authors with me. I have Dr. Cesar Peralta, Dr. Yaman Gibran, uh, which are my colleagues in residency. And uh, also I have medical student Maxwell Hill and Dr. Campo Maldonado. And I'm sorry, I forgot to say I'm a third year uh, medical internal medicine resident at UTRGV. Okay, so uh, coxidotomycosis is a disease caused by a dimorphic fungi, coxidotis imidis, and coxidotis posidasi. Uh, Southern California and Southern Arizona have the highest reported rates of valley fever. However, coxidotis are also found, found in parts of West Texas and along the Rio Grande River. Incidence, however, tends to decrease in the eastern, eastern part of Texas, close to the Gulf of Mexico because of increased humidity. Coxidiotis incidence also varies with season, wind severity, dust storms, and nowadays that we have seen an increase of incidence due to the wildfires. I'm gonna present a case of a 27 year old male with a history of eight cigarette smoking, a three week history of shortness of breath, pleuritic chest pain, and acute hypoxic respiratory failure. He initially presented to another institution where he was diagnosed with a left-sided pneumothorax. He had a chest tube place at that time. He felt immediate relief and left against medical advice. The chest tube was removed six days later in the outpatient setting, but his symptoms rapidly recurred, which prompted the patient to pursue a higher level of care. On admission, blood work revealed eosinophilia in a chest x-ray showed a large loculated left pneumothorax with atelectasis and infiltrates. Furthermore, the patient reported working as an electrical flightman in Central California two years before this presentation. At the time, he described having a painful nodular rash on his, on his lower extremities with spontaneous resolution. Since his return from California, he developed an insidious and intermittent cough, which he ignored. A chest CT confirmed a sizable left hydronemothorax with atelectasis of the left, entire left lung, and the pulmonary team placed a chest tube. As we can see on figure one, that's a chest uh, x-ray um, AP with left loculator pneumothorax. We can see it that we see like even like bubbles, but it's probably just loculations, and he merely was taken to the CT with IV contracts, and this is a transverse view which demonstrates the loculations, even like parts of fluid within those loculations. And this is a very tiny part of lung left there. So cardiothoracic surgery performed a BATS procedure with left decortication and pleurodesis. They found a three centimeter abscess in the left upper lobe during the procedure and sent samples for pathology and microbiological evaluation. During the hospitalization, coccidiotis antibodies by complement fixation were positive with a titer of 1 to 16. Culture from lung tissue specimens grew mold within a week, which was compatible with coccidiotis readily growth pattern in culture media at 35 degrees. Given the risk of exposure to the laboratory personnel or team communicated or diagnostic suspicion to the laboratory. post <laughs> post of serial chest extra show re-expansion of the left lung completely. Eventually, the chest tube was removed and the patient was discharged on boriconazole pending the final identification of the mold. After the patient was discharged, culture's results were finalized and isolated coccidiotis imidis. We communicated the results to the patient and the outpatient care team and he was switched to fluconazole therapy. Coxidity mycosis is more commonly a subclinical and, and self-limited disease in up to 60% of the cases. Acute pneumonia, also known as valley fever, extrathoracic disseminated infection, and complications occur more frequently in immunocompromised hosts. With more frequent wildfires in the Western United States, coxidomycosis mycosis has increased almost sixfold in the last two decades. We present a case of an immunocompetent patient who lived in an endemic area for two months and developed severe coccidomycosis 
with respiratory compromise two years later after being exposed. Clinicians should be able to recognize differential diagnoses for cavitary-like lung lesions, paying close attention to travel history and the CDC epidemiological data. Thank you. Now I'm open for any questions. Just one really quick uh, question. I'm very interested in the timeline. So he presented two years after being exposed for two months. Is that correct? That's correct. Is there any suggestions of how to track these types of patients that are in endemic areas, especially with that drastic delay? <laughs> Yeah, so I I looked further into the literature into like how what's like a pathogenesis of of the fungal or what precipitated this patient to develop such a severe disease long uh, later in time. So what uh, some of the literature that I found in the case reports were that there's a theory that the fungus could create a cavitary lesion, just a small one in that if the patient gets immunocompromised for anything, even alcohol consumption for this patient, he was an e-cigarette smoker, that maybe that kind of compromised his lung tissue a little bit and then uh, allowed the, the fungi to kind of uh, spread and cause this significant disease. But I feel like those two years, uh, it's difficult to make uh, some, something that they really talk about in the literature is difficult to know whether the patient if they're asymptomatic and they have positive titers or coccidiotis, whether this patient should be treated or not. Most of the time they're not because they're, they're, uh, they don't have any symptoms unless they're gonna have like a transplant, they're gonna undergo immunosuppression, then they will be treated. Uh, but we feel that uh, maybe that the patient just having the chronic cough and, and on top of that, having the e-cigarette smoking kind of made things grow. And, um, but, but yeah, that's a very good question. And we think that even in the beginning of the infection, he developed a small cavitary lesion that maybe uh, because sometimes those cavitary lesions, the walls are so thin that they can rupture, especially with coccidioides. It doesn't really happen with TB as much because the walls of the, of the cavitary lesion are a little bit thicker, but with the fungi coccidioides, the walls, they seem to be a lot thinner which can rupture and cause more significant pulmonary disease, which we believe, I mean, this could be the case for the patient. Wonderful job. Sorry.